Hello everyone, it's been a while since I've done an update video on my Magic Collection <laughs> and it has grown quite a bit since I've last uh, last done a video. There is Gandhi, the, <laughs> the Magic Cat, sitting on top of a... Well, is it, is it an empty box or is it a mirror? <laughs> a magician friend of mine actually gave me that box that he used for his shows back in the 60s and 70s in St. Louis. He actually placed third in the magic competition there. So let us begin. We'll begin on the right side of the table uh, for whatever reasons. How to book on the zombie. And we have two of them. Look at that price tag. Five dollars. If only, <laughs> if only it was that, like that today. Um, this, of course, is a book that he is uh, that he has given me, and I'm very uh, pleased that I have. <laughs> it, it is, uh, of course, the book where the, I mean, the, the trick where the, where the ball uh, floats around underneath the blanket. Then you have my uh, signed picture of David Copperfield that my friend retrieved from me at a magic convention uh, that he has gone to. Here we have the book. It's not the book that started it all, but it's the book that got me serious. The Royal Road to Card Magic, um, dated... This copy was dated rather in, had to be the early 70s. Uh, this is, was given to my grandfather by his friend, uh, and he got the book on 628-1971. So you know that this book is an old, an old edition of it. I have another book that has been given to me called Fire Magic. Um, again, five, five dollars there. I haven't, oh, found another. I keep finding uh, scraps of paper that have different different tricks on them. Oh, let's see what this is. Crazy glass, huh? Well, let's look at the. Let's look. Now here's a stunning variation of the effect, whereby not only the glass floats through mid air, it rises up and down as the performer pours into it, and it sighs relief when the trick is over. Not sure what that means, but. It looks very interesting. I'll have to put this over here with my uh, my other articles. <clears throat> Fire magic. I haven't, haven't had a chance to look at all the, a lot of this stuff because it's just been recently given to me. The Practical Encyclopedia of Magic. This thing is is huge. I I look through a lot of it, and a lot of it was uh, basic basic effects. So I haven't got into a lot of it just yet. I it, it takes it takes a long time to get through one book if you haven't figured that out. I mean, it can take. Months and months and months and years to just get through one book. One of those books being, of course, Expert Card Technique. The older brother to that book. Uh, this book is composed, of course, of many techniques from uh, many con uh, con uh, contributing musicians, musicians rather, including uh, Di Vernon or Dave Vernon, known as the Professor. Then we have 13 Steps to Mentalism. A old but classic book, actually a new edition that I purchased. Um, this one was actually not given to me, so it's not one of the first prints. Um, we also have the Encyclopedia of Cigarette Tricks by Cleith Clark. Uh, to hold down the <laughs> uh, to hold down the uh, flap there, I have my own uh, little wand that I bought off of Penguin Magic. Shipping included, and that shipping was expensive. This book, if you do not have this book and you want to perform live. You need to get this book. Notice, unlock the secrets of influence, charisma, and showmanship, and boy, does it tell you how to do that. It tells you how to gain confidence. It tells you how to get ready for an act. That book is really, really good. It's pretty cheap. If you don't have it, please, please think about getting that book. Highly recommended. Have your box of uh, B playing cards that have slowly dwindled down to just two remaining packs. <clears throat> My various coins. These babies actually... I uh, just have come into the mail today, uh, English pennies, and I'm excited to have those compared to my half dollars, which the English pennies are way, way lighter, very easy to control uh, comparative to those. Of course, most people are familiar with those, so I like to use those, but man, I cannot wait to, to incorporate these in my magic act. I specifically bought these for uh, copper, to, copper to silver uh, manipulations. This knife was owned by my grandfather. Um, it actually closes on its own. Uh, there's a little uh, trick to it, but you can't really do it uh, with just one hand. Uh, the, the 
premise behind it is it opens up. It says this knife is great, but it closes it back on its own. And again, I can't show the trick because I only have one hand available to me at this time. Here you have a trick that's been given to me by a friend. It is called Come Fly With Me. These coins are, of course, dollars from the, uh, from the early, or rather late 1800s. They are uh, very good, especially because they, uh, they slide a little bit. <laughs> uh, this one, I believe there's one. This is the magnetic one, and the other with it is, uh, is not magnetic. Very interesting props indeed. Uh, what you have here to the left is, I'll open it up for a second, so while uh, before I get to that, um, these are the two decks of cards that, that I have uh, opened. Well, I have the deep playing cards open. The bicycle cards I have not opened yet, uh, just because I'm going to wear those out first. Been practicing my second deals. <clears throat> you also have the first pack of playing cards that I owned, one that my granddad used when he was a magician, Aristocrats. Very smooth. Uh, very, very wonderful cards. And I can't get this back in, so I'm just going to leave it there. This is an effect I haven't looked into much. Um, but what it does is these cards all have movies in them. And somebody can pick any movie out of all 100 movies available. And you, being the magician, can guess what movie they did um, in, in a very, very short amount of time. And I'm sure we're all familiar with ways to make this, make this effect happen. Uh, that, of course, is just the instructions for that. Cup and balls. Um, I'll open those up and show those to you. Given to me yet by another magician friend. A lot of the stuff that I have, um, I bought myself, but, but quite a bit of it was given to me by people who wanted my magic to grow. And that's what I'm trying to do. Modern coin magic. May look old, may have a lot of coffee stains, um, and that's because it was owned, again, by the same man who gave me all of, all of these wonderful things. Modern Core Magic, man, I have gotten just a few pages in, and it's taken me a week. <laughs> I'm really working hard to perfect these. That's, that's something I'm very interested in. Expert at the card table. This, this uh, particular book has absolutely baffled me. I attack it every few, every few weeks. I get decently far into it. And it's just so much information, you can't possibly sit down and just go through the whole thing in any short amount of time. It takes, it, this is going to take months and months and years, years and years to learn. You have my first magic book ever. More card tricks. This is the book that my mom gave to me at a book fair. $2.99, if you can see that. Well, can't zoom. Okay, after some technical difficulties, aka my battery dying on my phone, um, I'm back. As I was saying, this is more card tricks. It was a bought for $2.99 in the U.S. How about that? Um, this was the first magic book that I ever owned and always will own. <laughs> Have not got into this. A uh, Flash Carry Summer, a <laughs> Flash Cards Carry Summer's memorized deck. Have not started it yet because, well, I uh, haven't had a show in a while, been in kind of a dry spell. Those things need no introduction. Um, you might see that they are very, very similar looking to that. <laughs> ah, yes, very good. Here we go. The Jeff McBride, The Art of Card Manipulation, Volume 1. I actually have a different volume in there. Um, uh, volume, volume 2 is found in there. Volume 3 is inside my DVD player, and Volume 1 is with a friend. Picture yourself as a magician. There's some pretty cool stuff in there. Some cool uh, uh, levitation things and uh, you see escape routines uh, that, that I'm looking forward to getting into. I bought this book a couple years ago at Books Million and haven't, uh, haven't messed with it much. But I have found a lot of joy in the levitation acts and things like that. Slide of Hand. Another classic that I have. Um, I guess you'd put this, this book in the same category as this book. The Modern Coin Magic, The Cigarette Tricks, um, Expert Card Technique, and Royal Road as being one of the staples of any person's uh, magical collection. <clears throat> a very good, very good book indeed. A lot of it has been re restated in uh, both Modern Coin Magic and Expert Card Technique, but still a good addition to have um, uh, naturally, of course. You also have uh, various 
Genie and Magic magazines. I'm too poor to buy my own subscription to any one of these, so my friend reads them, gives them to me. Very good stuff. This, if you do not have this book, I've said this a lot, <laughs> but if you do not have this book, why? Why not? <laughs> this book is so good. It has, oh, so many different things, different types of false shuffles. I mean, which of course, you know, other ones have as well, but also different types of tricks with uh, beads and scarves as well as um, a lot of just, you know, one of the best sections of this book is actually the back half, if I can get to it. Uh, it's um, just very, very small tricks uh, in a huge section uh, called the black art. It's things like stopping your pulse and stuff like that, all found in this great book. Gandhi the Magic Cat, go away. His name is actually is not Gandhi the Magic Cat. His name is Gandhi, which is short for Gandalf. Here's another old book, man. It's, um, Hellstromism. Very interesting things. Uh, and some basic math. <laughs> Mind reading for two people. Uh, the magician that gave me this, he has, uh, has an act that he used to do with his wife where they did the effects that were inside this book. Also, Mind Magic. It's got a felt, a felt cover uh, in more ways than one. <laughs> A very interesting, a very interesting book indeed. Uh, very similar to the things that are written over there. Now you have all of these articles. Crazy Glass, we've already looked at that. Um, uh, this is another mind reading act. Uh, this effect here, the, well I can't even read that, it's so uh, scratched off the, if you can if you see if you can see. The, uh, the, the, well, I don't want to fail by trying to pronounce that, but the, the performer Rightly defines a card thought of by a specta spectator. Very interesting. Notice some things. Uh, at no time a magician has anything palmed in his hand. Magician starts with empty hands and ends with empty hands. Every maneuver in this effect is deliberate and slow. At no time does a magician appear to touch. Spectators slip. I'm guessing they wrote down. And that is, of course, Built a Cigarette by Stuart Robinson. A lot of good stuff here. I feel proud of my collection. Hope you enjoyed looking at this with me. Again, one of my prizes that I have is this old gem used by a magician back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, so I bought some of this stuff. Friends have given me and lent me some of these things, and I enjoy every bit of it. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> Chris Angel Monfreak set, platinum edition, regular edition. Why did I buy these? Easy. Uh, easy question to answer for the sponge balls and originally for the cup and ball trick until I got my own uh, sterling silver ones. So originally for the sponge balls and they had some invisible thread and why not get an extra magic book to your collection. Well, that is all. I'm going to clean this stuff up before Gandhi cleans it up for me. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and you've enjoyed a tour through my own personal collection.